Well, for me, the mission is to try and change the narrative so we don't just talk about aging in a negative way, but recognize that over the last 100 years, we've added so many more years to life and most of them healthy. And we may even add even more of the years ahead. So the forum is set up to try and make sure that we create an environment and a narrative in which as many people as possible can live as long as possible in as healthy a way and as fulfilled a way as possible. It's a big aim, but then that's what this opportunity of longer life can offer us. Uh, what's distinctive, I and mean, there's lots of people doing great work in this area, in, in ageing in particular, I think the focus on longevity, which for me is about all of life and not just end of life. It's also about bringing together the scientific community and the social science side, the behavioural and the policy side, because those two together are needed. We need the scientists to make sure that life continues to get healthier and longer, but also we need the society to change and adjust to make the most of that opportunity. So I think that's the sort of most distinctive thing. And then there's one other thing I think that's distinctive, which is that I'm keen to try and make sure we take this narrative outside of the community who's most interested in it to a much wider group of people, to governments and corporates who just need to recognise that this is real important and we need to do something about it. So that outreach and going to perhaps a non-traditional community to discuss this topic is key. Of course what we're seeing is around the world we're seeing life lengthening um, and again most of those years of life are healthy. So around the world, everyone's having to adjust to this longer course of life. So it's a global agenda, uh, although most of that has been focused mainly around ageing. So uh, we've partnered with a number of like-minded institutions overseas, particularly at Stanford with the Longevity Centre run by Laura Carstensen. And we recently hosted a really exciting meeting backed by the Rockefeller Foundation in Bellagio, which was identifying across the world what is this longevity agenda what makes it distinctive. So we had participants from China, Africa, India, Japan, Singapore uh, and the US and Europe uh, and we're building on from that to create a, a global group of longevity researchers and trying to encourage a global longevity agenda that every country around the world has to start thinking about these longevity issues. Uh, so very excited about that, it's a really uh, great development uh, which I think is going to start to raise the profile at an international level and not just in the UK. So this affects everything. I mean, there's just nothing that's untouched because the way I see it is that it's about having more time. And if we have more time, we structure it differently. What's interesting, the 20th century, we created a, st a structure to life that was built around 70 years and you begin with education, you work, you retire and retirement is quite short. But of course as life expectancy is lengthened, we're well, finding that structure doesn't work anymore. So we need to restructure life and the question is how do we make best use of that time? And it's striking how people always think that sort of time is fixed, but we create time. The 20th century created the weekend, it created teenagers, it created pensioners. So now we're creating new stages of life. And the question is, what do we do with this extra time? Uh, already people are behaving differently. They're marrying later, they're having children later, getting divorced later. Uh, they're having babies in their 40s rather than under 20s. And of course, they're working for longer. So it affects everything, relationships, education, work, and of course, communities and families, because as people have fewer children, but more generations are alive, the structure of the family changes. So it really does change everything because life affects everything.